What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. This is the daily episode. I'm holding it down for C Dub and Bobby. And on today's episode, we'll talk about uh, T- uh, Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borm still practicing with the first team and how it seems like they are firmly now the starters on that right side of the ball. We'll also get into what Adam Schefter thinks may happen with Tevin Jenkins before the start of the season. We'll also talk about uh, cuts that I think are coming as the Chicago Bears have to get that roster number down to 80 by tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And last, we'll talk about Robert Quinn and his ranking on the top 100 players in the NFL in 2022. We'll get into all that and more on today's Chicago Bears Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bears fans, you can be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me on Chicago Bears Central, holding it down for C-Dub and Bobby. And first up, Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borm are apparently still practicing with the first team offense. Uh, They did so in the final training camp practice. They're doing so uh, now. So with that being said, it seems like the, the Bears have finally settled in on that offensive line. And shout out to Bobby, who on our last episode that we were all together on Sunday, did not mention how he just wants to see this Bears team just, just lock in the offensive line. It just is what it is. Let, let them go through their, through their troubles. Let them go through their issues. Just lock in that starting offensive line. And it seems like the right guard and right tackle positions are going to Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borm. Now, Tevin Jenkins, I feel, had a really good game in that second preseason game. Larry Borm had a solid game as well. I wouldn't say as good. I think he missed a, a, a couple of more blocks that he could have had that Tevin Jenkins did not. But with that being said, it does seem like they have now, they're firmly the starters on that offensive line. And shout out to Tevin Jenkins, who's had quite a offseason, right? Going from people coming into the offseason being very, uh, you know, wondering where his potential was going to set. Two, not practicing, not uh, contributing in training camp to people saying that he gonna be that he was going to be traded, that the Bears are going to look on to him coming in to that first practice that he came into having that first press conference. And after that point, going from practicing with the second team to working his way all the way back to being the starter now at that right guard position. And Matt Eberflus had this to say. It's about guys who can sustain the performance, can sustain execution and then take that to the first week. So we'll let it play out and we'll see where it is. But it seems like it's it, as of right now, where it is, it's, it's with Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borm being the starters on that right side of the ball. And, you know, considering a position move for, for Jenkins, for him to, you know, for them to really try to figure that out. They have been using almost every combination of players that they have available and and healthy to really find out what the best version of that offensive line is going to be. Now, there's still going to be holes in that offensive line regardless, right? We know that this offensive line, considering, you know, with, with Larry Borm, with Seven Jenkins, with uh, Braxton Jones, you have players that have not played a bunch of NFL snaps and none for, for two of those players that are coming into that O-line and they're, they're going to be growing pains. There are going to be nights where we second guess it. There's going to be all of that. But at the end of the day, if they can, if they can develop over the course of their first seasons as starters, uh, consistent starters, and turn into something. Now, will all three end up being starters on the offensive line by next season? I doubt it, right? If it does, if we, if we, if these three that I just mentioned are all still starters by the start of this, of the season, next season, that means that they grew and developed greatly over the course of this NFL season. And that's what you want to see if possible. So we'll see. I have my faith in it. Tevin Jenkins, like I said, I always wanted to see his potential and what that may turn into in the Chicago in the Chicago Bears roster, and it seems like we're gonna we're gonna get to see that at least in the first part of the season. Now, keeping with the conversation on Tevin Jenkins, Adam Schefter has come out and says that he still expects Tevin Jenkins to be traded. Now, I want to hear from you guys down on this one. Do you still believe that? I'm gonna get into the quotes, but do you still sit there? Because now I don't see it. Right, I do not see Tevin Jenkins being traded. I just I don't think you would you would allow him the chance in the position to win that starting job. He does win the starting job by by the way everything looks, and then you still trade him. But we'll go into with this one. So Adam Schefter on ESPN 1000 said this, I still think Tevin Jenkins will be traded. My belief is they'll wind up trading him before the final roster cut down day or right around there, if not before. My guess would be that he is not a bear this season. That it's wild to me. Like if if this was a quote that came out during the whole initial like Tevin Jenkins returning to practice, being with the second squad, I would understand that. But where things sit right now, that he's impressed this Bulls coaching staff, this Bulls, this Bears coaching staff so much to the point to where he is now a starter. They switched positions to try to get him in there and he excelled at that. So considering Tevin Jenkins only 24 years old in the second year of his rookie deal um, is now. 
being a starting piece on that offensive line, on top of that, has played very well with more reps and more opportunity. I don't see it. I just don't see it, man. Um, and, th- you know, this is this continues a thing that we've seen. Just the way that the commentary has been around the Chicago Bears with mainstream media has just been shitty, to be quite honest with you. And I, it, it's, it's kind of unbelievable. And I really do think a lot of people are commenting on the Chicago Bears that don't pay attention to the Chicago Bears daily. And if you don't pay attention to the Chicago Bears, how the hell do you have the right to speak on what a player is going to be moved or not, right? Like, if this was the Robert Quinn thing, earlier in if this was the Roquan Smith thing okay I understand that but this is just you're not paying attention I don't think I don't think Adam Schefter even knew that Tevin Jenkins is now the starter I just I I can't believe that that's what that that's what he would still think after the way that Tevin Jenkins has worked himself up he's built himself up to being that starter on the right guard position so let me know what you guys think about that one do you believe Adam Schefter here, that there's still a chance that Tevin Jenkins could be moved and moved before the start of the actual season. I just don't see it personally. You guys can feel differently. And if you do, please sound off on that one down below. Next thing we're going to get into is I want to predict the Chicago Bears have to make five more cuts by um, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's that's the last small cut. And then they have to make another big cut to go down from 80 to the final 53 man roster. So these are some of the cuts that I do think are coming tomorrow. We'll see if I'm right or not. This is not me predicting all five or saying all five of these are for sure, but these are five players. I think when it's boil, when it boils down, they're not going to be on the on the Bears' final roster. The first one is Demontre Tuggle. Now this is not necessarily because Tuggle has played terribly, right? He's gotten some runs, he's gotten some nice runs in at that, but he really comes in at a disadvantage because he's in at a position that we are completely deep at. You got to look at. You got Khalil Herbert. You got Tristan Ebner. You got David Montgomery. I And considering Tuggle is an undrafted rookie free agent, Tristan Ebner is a rookie that they actually drafted. I just don't see them carrying him into the roster going forward, considering the fact that Ebner's looked really, really good, especially in the passing game. Herbert, we already know he's tried, um, proven and true. And Montgomery, we already know what David Montgomery is. So if I had to make... A cut, I'm looking at that running back position just because it's already a position at de- as at, with depth. Blasting game also as a, as a fullback. They just signed another fullback. I think I think Tuggle is, is the writing's on the wall for Tuggle. Even if it doesn't happen this next upcoming cut tomorrow, I do think that this is going to be a cut that we do see happen before that final uh, 53-man roster is all settled. So that, that's my first one. The next one up is Jalen Jones. And... This may be, I don't know if, if any of body on this list is a surprise, but if this is one, it, it may be one. He, he's had a couple of good a good practices. Um, he's had a couple of good series. Um, he suffered a lower leg injury, which I think is what's going to make him be cut in this one. Not to necessarily say that I would not make him uh, or want him to see get that final cornerback spot, but considering the injury and the opportunities and the fact that he hasn't really done anything to hugely shine, I think Jalen Jones is going to be a cut here for the Chicago Bears. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Um, next up is wide receiver Kevin Shea. And uh, Shaw, I think it is. Shaw, I'm sorry. Another undrafted rookie free agent. Um, he had two, two catches for 22 yards. Um, he was targeted three times. But just again, because of everything going on with the right now, the, the, the injuries to Nikhil Harry, the injuries to Byron Pringle, who we still don't know exactly what's going on with, that could change this. But I do look at, and even Daz Newsom, I do think, I think Daz Newsom may also be a, a, a member of cuts by the time it's the 53-man roster, but I don't think it's going to be in this cut. And because of that, I think Kevin Shaw is going to be the next one up cut in that wide receiver position. After that, cornerback Craig Stroman Jr., another one of the people who's been battling for roster spots. Uh, he hasn't played in any of the preseason games so far because he did have another undisclosed injury. And I think with people like Lamar Jackson, um, even Jalen Jones, who's made more opportunities. I know I listed him as a potential cut, but he's made more of opportunities. Uh, Bo Pete, uh, Keys as well. I think that because of the injury, we may see Stroman Jr. cut. Now, he could come back on the practice squad, something like that. But I do think that that injury, anytime you have an injury and you haven't really gotten to perform or other people have gotten to perform and, and, and stuff, I think that you're a risk to be cut, especially at this point in the early cuts. But let me know what you guys think. I know I only listed four there. Let me know anyone you think that has a chance of being cut tomorrow when that cut has to be done by 3 p.m. Central Time. Let me know if you guys think I'm tripping on anybody. Let me know if they, all that down below. But before we go today, we got one last topic to get into, and that is Robert Quinn being number 48 on the top 100 players 
in the NFL in 2022. Considering that the Bears already had two other players, he makes the third one in the top 100 for the Chicago Bears. Um, and again, the NFL Network is going through this. Uh, he's following one of the best seasons of his NFL career. 18 and a half sacks. Um, you, we already know what that is. 12 sacks in the final eight games for, for the Bears. And then recording at least a half a sack in 14 of 16 games. Listen, Pro Bowl season uh, last season, second team all pro. It was not, It was writing on the wall that Robert Quinn was going to be listed on this list. And, you know, considering what's going on with him, the, the Bears are in like a pseudo rebuild, so to, so to say. He's he's a, he's an older player, so we don't know how that's going to line up with him staying with the Chicago Bears. But again, the Chicago Bears now uh, having the 48th overall best out of the 100 best players in the NFL with Robert Quinn. It's well-deserved. He had a great season last season. We'll see if he's able to have another big season this season. Considering other players that we're going to have out on the edge, we'll see what that happens. You know, the front seven is one of the most impressive things to me um, on, on, this, on this team. And now, considering Roquan Smith is going to be back playing as well, no longer worried about that contract, uh, this is going to be this, Robert Quinn could have a big season. Now, the one thing with Robert Quinn is that he typically has one really good season followed by a not so good season or a so-so season. So we'll see what happens with Robert Quinn in that uh, in that state. But he could be a very big part of the Chicago Bears defense and why they play better than what some people. And I think the defense may make it easier on the offense as well with positioning, everything like that. This defense is going to be a big part to the Chicago Bears success overall. And Robert Quinn is going to be a huge part of that if he's able to give us even if he gives us 80 percent of what he gave us last season it's still that's what's crazy about it right if robert quinn gave us 80 only gives us 80 percent of what he gave us last season that's still a pro bowl season so yeah re really excited for for this team overall and shout out to robert quinn for making it number 48 in the top 100 in this upcoming season let me know if you guys think he was rated too high too low let me know all that down below but that is it for today's daily episode of chicago bear central thank you so much for joining us make sure you're following the show at shy bear central on every social media platform you can send us any feedback questions comments concerns chicago bear central at gmail.com lastly if you want to leave a text and our voicemail the number to do so 773-270-2799 we're the number one spot for everything chicago bears related because of you guys and that's it like i like to end every episode on bear down peace y'all this has been a presentation of the break break, break media, media.